Good afternoon, and thank you for joining the Oregon Employment Department for today's media briefing. We're going to wait just another couple of minutes to give everyone time to log in before we get started. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Rebecca Gibson King, and, my, and I am the Communications Director for the Oregon Employment Department. Today's speakers are Lindsay Leahy, Unemployment Insurance Director, Karen Madden Hummelbaugh, Paid Leave Oregon Director, and OED Director David Gerstenfeld. A couple of quick notes. This call is being recorded, and we will we'll post it, the recording online and send out the link after the briefing. We will take questions after opening remarks, and if you have any technical difficulties or are otherwise unable to answer your, ask your question today, you can always send us an email at communications at employ.oregon.gov, and we'll be happy to help you. I will now turn it over to Unemployment Insurance Director, Lindsay Leahy. Please go ahead, Lindsay. Thank you, Rebecca. Unemployment insurance benefits will go live in Francis online on March 4th. Today, I'll be sharing an update on what to expect over the next month leading up to and during the migration from our legacy systems to Francis online. This is the final phase of the Employment Department's Unemployment Insurance Modernization Project. Francis online is the same system that we're already using to pay benefits for Paid Leave Oregon, and collect employer contributions for paid leave and unemployment insurance. We've been working hard to deliver this new system for a long time, and we are excited about the upcoming migration because Francis Online will address several challenges that our customers have contended with in our old systems. Overall, it will bring a better online experience for our customers. As we migrate to Francis, we want to make sure to share updates on our progress and highlight information that unemployment insurance customers need to know about the coming changes. The migration of unemployment insurance benefits from the current system to Francis Online will begin at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, February 27. The legacy systems will go completely offline at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, February 28. The new system will go live at 8 a.m. on Monday, March 4. This means that neither claimants nor employers will be able to access their information. Current claimants won't be able to check claim status, update their information, file a claim, or review any of the information within the online claim system at any time during the migration. Service interruptions like this are normal for a large technology project similar to this one. We also understand that this can be a source of frustration for our customers, so we are committed to communicating early and often about what they need to know to be prepared for the migration. Now, this is very important. Current claimants who want to claim unemployment insurance benefits for the week of February 18th through the 24th will need to file their weekly claim by 5 p.m. on Wednesday, February 28th. Again, that's 5 p.m. on Wednesday, February 28th. If they do not file their weekly claim by this time, they will have to wait until the new system is up and running at 8 a.m. on Monday, March 4th, and their benefits for that week will be delayed. Claimants can file for the week of February 25th through March 2nd, starting at 8 a.m. on Monday, March 4th. This is important to share because most people file their weekly claims on Sunday, so they'll need to wait a day in order for the system to open up. Over the next month, we will continue to remind claimants about these important dates. We will be doing this by leveraging all of our communication channels, including sending letters and emails and posting to social media. We are posting web banner alerts on several employment department websites, and we will also be posting updates and reminders on unemployment.oregon.gov. We are asking you, our media partners, to help us spread the word about this important information so customers can avoid a delay in getting their benefits. We will be sharing a migration timeline along with the press release today that's going out uh, later this afternoon, and it will also be posted on unemployment.oregon.gov. Customer service for unemployment insurance will be limited during the migration. People will not be able to file a new initial claim application for unemployment insurance benefits by phone or use the online claim system during the migration. To get their initial claim in before the migration, 
claimants need to file before 5 p.m. on Tuesday, February 27. The Contact Us form, chatbot, and live agent chat on unemployment.oregon.gov will go offline from 5 p.m. on Tuesday, February 27, to Monday, March 4 at 8 a.m. We are also migrating these tools to francis.oregon.gov during that time. Unemployment insurance customer phone lines will be closed Wednesday, February 28th through Friday, March 1st. They will reopen at 8 a.m. on Monday, March 4th when Francis Online goes live. The old online claim system will be offline beginning at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, February 28th. The automated telephone weekly claim line will also be closed at that time. Staff at the Oregon Employment Department Central Office in Salem and WorkSource Oregon centers across the state will not be able to answer specific questions about claims. However, job seekers can still visit the WorkSource Oregon centers to get help with their job search activities, participate in training, get career help, and more. Here is what customers can expect when the new system goes live on Monday, March 4th at 8 a.m. They can file their claim for the week of February 25th through March 2nd using Francis Online or the automated telephone weekly claim line. They can also file their claim for the week of February 18th through the 24th if they haven't already. To use the new system, before customers can file a claim or see any claim information, they must first create a Francis Online account. Once that step is completed, the information about their current claim will appear in their new Francis Online account. We will share more details about the process for creating an account in Francis in future messages. The new system is exciting, but people should wait to create a Francis Online account for unemployment insurance benefits until March 4th. We are asking that current claimants check unemployment.oregon.gov often for updates. We expect a lot of people to call the Unemployment Insurance Division for at least the first couple of weeks after Francis Online goes live. We are staffing up in anticipation of the increased call volume, but expect all customer service channels to be, to be very busy. Instead of calling, we encourage customers to use Francis Online to check on the status of their claim and use other self-service options within Francis Online to get the information they need without having to wait on hold. Please know we'll be closely monitoring the processes leading up to the migration and during the migration, and we'll share any updates or changes in these briefings and on our website. We encourage current unemployment insurance claimants to check their mail daily review all letters and messages from us for the, in the coming weeks, regularly check unemployment.oregon.gov, and follow us on social media for important updates. As with any big technology project, there may be issues that arise. We are planning for this, and we are committed to communicating early and often about what we are seeing and what we are doing to make adjustments. We understand that change may be difficult, and we are here to help make the transition as easy as possible for our customers. Francis Online is designed to be user-friendly and efficient, making the online claim filing experience better. Now I'll turn it over to Paid Leave Oregon Director, Karen madden Hummelbaugh. Thanks, Lindsay. I'm giving an update today on the latest data for Paid Leave Oregon and also how Paid Leave Oregon will be affected by the migration of unemployment insurance to Francis Online. As of last Friday, we have received 49,122 ID verified applications and resolved, which means either approved or denied benefits, 43,480 of those, which is 88.5% of claims. So far, this means that more than $238 million have been paid to over 34,000 of our neighbors during qualifying paid leave events. Because Paid Leave Oregon benefits and contributions are already in Francis Online, our program will be impacted by the migration of unemployment insurance benefits to the new system. As is normal for a big technology system like Francis, the system will be unavailable for both our customers and our staff during the migration. Francis Online will be unavailable for our paid leave customers from 5 p.m. on Wednesday, February 28th 
until 8 a.m. on Monday, March 4th. Customers will not be able to create an account, file a new claim, check claim status, claim intermittent weeks, verify identity, or update claim information during this time. The due date to file for weekly benefits on an intermittent claim and receive benefits on time for February 18th through the 24th is 5 p.m. on Wednesday, February 28th. Because our staff will not have access to Francis Online, we are closing our phone lines from Wednesday, February 28th through Friday, March 1st. We will use this time to give our staff additional training on how to use the system with unemployment insurance now added into it and to work more efficiently. Our contact us form will also be unavailable from 5 p.m. Wednesday, February 28th until 8 a.m. on Monday, March 4th. We understand that this system outage will be an inconvenience for our customers and we are doing all we can to limit the impact as much as possible. We will be notifying our customers of the system outage through website banners on Francis Online and the Paid Leave Oregon website, as well as emails and social media. I'd now like to turn it over to Director David Gerstenfeld. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I also want to assure people that we're also sending messages to the employers that use Francis Online to pay their contributions and the contributions of their employees for paid leave to let them know that Francis Online will be unavailable during the migration of unemployment insurance benefits. In addition to messaging on Francis Online, we'll also send out spe special messages to all employer accounts and issue an employer bulletin with this information to all currently registered employers. Our contributions and recovery phone lines will also be closed during this migration as our staff won't have access to the system. Instead, these employees will also be engaged in special training to be able to better serve customers when Francis Online is back up and running on March 4th. At the last briefing, I announced we were sending 1099 tax forms to everyone who received either unemployment insurance or paid leave organ benefits in 2023. And today I have an update on how that's going. Every January, the Oregon Employment Department works with the Department of Administrative Services to print and send tax forms known as 1099-G and 1099-MIS or M-I-S-C to everybody who claimed benefits the year before. This year, we're sending out about 122,000 forms for the unemployment insurance program, and for the first time, about 33,000 1099 forms for paid leave organ. Last week, the Department of Administrative Services notified us that one of their vendor's machines malfunctioned sometimes inserting two 1099-G forms into one envelope. This means some people may have received two 1099-G forms in their envelope, theirs and someone else's. Fortunately, the vendor stopped the printing before most of the forms were sent. This issue impacted only 1099-G forms for those who received unemployment insurance benefits and did not impact everybody who got unemployment benefits. It impacted some, but not all, of the approximately 33,000 forms that were mailed before the vendor identified the issue and stopped the mailings. And this issue did not impact paid leave organ 1099 forms. There's more detail in the news release the Department of Administrative Services sent out on Friday, but the 1099 form does contain some personal information like a person's name, the last four digits of their social security number and their address. Because of this, we're asking anybody who receives someone else's 1099 tax form to please shred or otherwise destroy the other person's 1099-G as soon as possible. The Department of Administrative Services reprinted all of the 1099-Gs that may have been affected, and they will finish mailing all of those forms today. If people don't wanna wait for their form to arrive in the mail, they can get an electronic version of their 1099-G now using the online claim system. I do wanna express my gratitude to the team at the Department of Administrative Services for their quick response and collaboration on supporting our customers. There was also an issue with some of the paid leave organ 1099s impacting about 26,000 customers who chose to have taxes taken out of their benefit payments. The forms had the net and not the gross amount in the field for benefits. 
We're printing and mailing corrected 1099 tax forms for those who are impacted and expect those forms to go out in the mail by the end of the week. Starting tomorrow, February 1st, customers can also find an electronic version of their corrected 1099 form in their Francis Online account. Issues like this are common when launching a new program along with a whole new technology system of this magnitude. I'm very sorry for the inconvenience this may have caused some people, and fortunately, the error was caught and resolved very quickly. It's a great example of how Francis Online gives us the flexibility to respond to issues as they arise and helps us make sure that our customers are impacted as little as possible. And now I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca for questions and answers. Thanks, David. We're now going to open the lines for members of the media to ask questions. Um, please raise your hand if you have one. If you're joining us by phone and I call on you, please make sure to hit star six to unmute yourself. And as always, if you don't get your question answered today, you can always email us at communications at employ.oregon.gov. So the first hand that I see is Christina. I'm going to allow you to talk. Go ahead, Christina. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, this is a question for Karen. Um, wondering what your call times look like right now and how do you expect the transition of Francis to the employment uh, insurance as well to affect those call times once you return online? Yeah, thanks for those questions. I actually am pretty excited to report. If you look at our data that we release on Wednesdays, um, our call wait times are actually improving. Uh, we're under 50 minutes on average. I think it's 48 minutes this uh, past week. So we're moving in the right direction with those call wait times um, uh, as we're continuing to hire and put people on the phones. We actually have uh, different call-in numbers for unemployment insurance and, uh, and for paid leave Oregon. So um, those would be sort of separate situations. So our call wait times will be sort of the same and hopefully continuing to improve. I guess the question then is, you know, because you're going offline for such a lengthy period of time, do you expect those call volumes to increase immediately after? And, and are you upstaffing during that period to, to deal with that? Yeah, every Monday, actually, after a weekend or a holiday is a time when we expect high volume, and we would anticipate that the same would be true of the Monday following uh, the system being down for a few days. So we will have all hands on deck that day. I think I may be the only one on here. Oh, <laughs> no, there's there's other people. I just don't see any other hands raised. OK, well, just gonna keep asking questions. I, I can keep going. Oh. <laughs> Did um, you have another question, Christina? Yeah, I have plenty. <laughs> OK, go ahead as, with one more. I, I'm seeing other um, hands start to raise now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Karen, could you please break down uh, how many employees you have within the paid leave Oregon system and, and how many are assigned to which different departments within that system? I can certainly get you that information. I I don't. I we have over 300 folks. Um, I, we can break it down for you on who is in like which section. Um, certainly, though, when we're talking about things like phones, uh, some people are on phones um, specific times and days. But if we get high volume, we put additional people on. So it may not be the the greatest indicator just to look at numbers to know how we're managing the volume day to day. And then what uh, what number of of open positions do you have right now? We're actually hiring right now, so anything folks can do to help us get the word out there. Um, I think we have about 30 folks that we're bringing on board right now. Many of those are bilingual positions. Uh, you can find those on our jobs page. Um, and we will continue to um, hire up until we get the customer service at the levels that we want it to be. When you say 30 people you're bringing on board, is that people you're in the process of hiring or are those the open positions? Uh, that is open positions that we are hiring for currently for those frontline customer service folks. And are there other open positions or is that ju just the 30? Uh, we have kind of a complex situation with our budget and our position authority. This is with all state uh, state budget systems, but uh, we are really looking at what do we need in order to provide the customer service levels we need to and also stay within our administrative uh, confines um, in terms of budget. Um, and so that number is a little bit flexible right now as we are implementing and we were um, not exactly sure the number of positions that we'd need. So as we move into our next budget cycle, uh, we'll have a much more refined sense of what our totals need to be. Rebecca, I want to be respectful of other people, but I could keep going. So you just okay. tell me. Yeah, so we've got, I'm going to let other people go first. And then if, if we still have time, I'll come back to you. Does that sound good? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, awesome. 
Uh, next up is Peter Wong. I'm going to allow you to speak. Okay, go ahead, Peter. Remember to unmute yourself. Okay, I should be ready. Uh, for anybody on on the 1099G forms, was the paid leave Oregon uh, issue related to the vendor on uh, the unemployment insurance benefits, or are they separate issues that just coincide? Uh, Peter, th those were separate issues. They were unrelated. This is the first time that paid leave has paid benefits. So it's the first time that 1099Gs have ever been issued or 1099 miscellaneous forms for the paid leave Oregon program. So it was an unrelated issue. Okay, and, yeah, I've gotten a couple of inquiries about the uh, unemployment insurance benefits because obviously they must be awaiting them to start their taxes. So thank you. Sure, and, and that's one of the reasons we prioritize making those available electronically and why we're so glad that in both instances, um, corrected forms and follow-up has been able to be to be issued so quickly. Thank you. Okay, next up is Kyra Buckley with OPD. I'm allowing you to speak. Go ahead, Kyra. Hi, Kyra Buckley, OPD here. Thanks so much for taking my questions. Um, maybe any of you could answer this, but I'm gonna um, direct it to David. I'm just thinking through um, what the outage will look like while you guys are migrating over. And I'm a little concerned about the phone line, uh, phones being down. And I'm wondering what the process will look like if somebody does call in, will the, there be a message directing them to either where they can get more information about when they will be able to get in, access their online portal? And, and what will that communication look like? Kyra, that's a great question, and we're working, this is really the, the initial phase of a lot of communication. Uh, we do regularly have messaging on our phone line when the system is down, like at the end of the day. So we will have messaging talking to people about the closure, that it's for the migration. Uh, we'll be pushing a lot of messaging out through all kinds of channels, hopefully minimizing how many people uh, will actually be in that situation. So we want people to know ahead of time and to file early in the week, which will mean that they wouldn't have any disruption at all in their benefits. Um, but for folks that do call in, we'll have a lot of messaging out there letting people know that it's a short temporary uh, outage and what they can expect uh, at 8 a.m. on Monday the 4th when the new systems come online. And, and we'll be continuing to update our communications plan and posting that on our websites as well as sharing with you all. Excellent, thank you. Okay, not seeing any other hands. I'll uh, uh, hand it back to Christina. Yeah, ahead, thanks Christina. so much. Um, Karen, when we had spoken a while back uh, before the end of the year, you had mentioned that a lot of the backlog you were expecting to be cleared up by this new year. Um, now that we're you know well into the new year or at least to the first month of it, um, can you talk about what your backlog looks like and, and could you pr provide some sort of breakdown of the payout so how many people, how many people percentage wise are getting paid out within a week, within two weeks, three weeks, et cetera? Yeah, I think when um, we talked earlier about the different backlogs, we were talking about places in the system where we had people sort of getting stuck. Some of those places were, uh, we clearly talked about ID verification, that failure to provide information. Uh, we talked about different places where fraud affects those. So those are places where we've actually gotten our, um, our kind of turnaround times down significantly by putting people onto those projects and staffing up in those areas. I do not have a breakdown um, for you in terms of well, like week by week or where people are in the process. That is something we're working on. Um, we're looking at all of the internal data so that we can kind of provide that on a more regular basis, but I don't have that for you today. Do you know how many people right now are stuck in those administrative delays? When we talk about things like ID verification, where we had sort of an actual list of people who hadn't provided, failure to provide lists, that kind of thing, uh, we know that that particular list 
um, is being worked on a daily basis to a net zero. So essentially, the number of people who are in there are being communicated with and we're getting them taken care of um, and then working list the next day. And so there will always be people who are in some of these processes and pieces because not everybody has the same experience. There are a lot of complexities, kind of depends on your leave type, your documentation. It depends on um, what you're providing, what we need to do for follow up with you. So there will always be some folks who are we are communicating with on a regular basis to make sure their claims going through. So, if, so am Christina, I getting it correct? That, sorry, go ahead. What was so, that? Yeah, ask, ask your clarified question, then I'm going to let Mike ask his question. Sure. Yeah, so is it correct then to, to assume that somebody would have a communication from you on a daily basis if they are in that delayed process of verification? No, it just means that like if we had 50 people who uh, found themselves in failure to provide today, our team would look at that list tomorrow, communicate with those 50 people, let them know what we need from them, um, have a, an outgoing communication with them and talk to them about that. Um, and then the next day, then maybe there would be additional people we would be communicating that day. I'm not sure, but we can touch base on, on that again later I, once the other question is asked. I, I, I don't think I understand what you're, uh, what you're saying there, so I just want to make sure we clarify. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, Christina. Um, I'm going to let the uh, Mike Rogoway with the Oregonian ask us question. I'm allowing you to talk. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, all. This is a, a question for David or Lindsay, um, and perhaps you just said it, but what's the, the current price tag on the overall Francis Online project? I, I, I know the numbers seem to be pretty stable for a while, but I wondered where you ended up. It, that's a great question. It's not a number I have off the top of my head, so we can certainly follow up. Um, it will with, with, it will be in the press release that we send out later today. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah, I, I do Thanks. know that we are still uh, on track with the original budget that was set even before the Paid Leave Oregon program was incorporated into the Francis project. And it does look like um, we have uh, our baseline budget is $106 million, my subject matter experts are telling me. But like I said, it'll be in the um, press release. Thank you. Okay, um, Christina, do you have a, a, a follow up question? Yeah, I, I'm really just trying to understand. So if I'm in a backlog where I have an ID verification issue or any other issue that's causing my claim to not be processed for months on end, you are contacting me on a daily basis or not? I'm specifically speaking to people who are in that failure to provide category. So those are the folks who have not provided us information that we have asked them to do. And then they reach out and say, hey, what's going on with my claim? And so we're making sure that we're getting a contact out to those particular people. That was the place that we've all been talking about was a situation where we had a backlog that we now have under control. And so that's what I was referencing specifically. Uh, people who are um, you know, everybody else is being worked just as a claim would be worked. It's being pulled by staff um, sort of on a next task basis. And with the Francis Online system, are people, are your employees able to see when a document has been uploaded? Do they get notified when a document has been uploaded by a client? Do they get notified when a client submits an, an email or a request or something through the Francis Online system? We do not directly get notified if somebody uploads something into their account like a, like a, hey, there's something waiting, you've got mail kind of a thing. That is not how the system works. But the person who is assigned to the claim uh, would be looking at it and looking at that issue and seeing the documentation was uploaded. Okay, I'm going to toss it over to Kyra. It looks like she has a follow-up question. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I and apologies, I was not... Um, Living in Oregon as we were coming out of the pandemic, but I know that one of the reasons for migrating over to Francis Online um, is to help update the uh, online systems for the department. And um, I guess, David, this is probably another question for you. Um, I'm just wondering if you could maybe just give me kind of a broad overview of maybe what the main advantage Francis Online will have to the previous system and, and how it's going to benefit Oregonians that are, are putting in claims. Sure, Kyra, and, and you're right. Part of the need for us to modernize really was highlighted during the pandemic. We were underway with the modernization work for unemployment insurance before the pandemic started. Uh, and the reasons that we wanted to do it really answer your question. We uh, There's concerns about data security, 
Uh, and certainly we saw the increased attacks on unemployment systems in Oregon and throughout the nation during the pandemic, and those continue. Uh, yeah. Importantly, from the perspective of somebody seeking benefits, it's more user-friendly, it's easier for self-help, it's easier for us to update. Uh, it, so we're no longer relying sometimes, for instance, and in needing somebody who can do COBOL programming to update a form letter. Uh, so it's much more adaptable. Uh, when I was talking about the 1099G issues earlier, that's something that was discovered, corrected, uh, and updates are being made very, very rapidly. Uh, there are also a lot of other customer service benefits. So that ability to have the secure communication, that web mail essentially in their account for paid leave Oregon or for unemployment insurance is something that we really didn't have. And it's much more integrated. Uh, one of the challenges that we know people have faced is they would be communicating with us through multiple channels. And as we've really focused on making it easier for people to contact us, um, over the years, we've added new and new layers to the old legacy systems. So it's really hard to keep all of those in alignment. So some of the notices that people got weren't really that accurate to the situation that they were in. We're much more able to update notices, keep things aligned with this new system. Um, that's part of why the migration that we're talking about also, we have so many different dates is because there are just so many different systems in the, the old operating environment that were needed to try to kind of patch together the best customer service that we could. But with Francis Online, we have uh, multiple communication channels that, that secure email route uh, with whoever's working on their claim. We have live chat. Uh, we have the contact us forms that will all be integrated together. So we think after some initial uh, bumps as every person, including all of our employees, get used to the new system, that it will really offer a lot of benefits for customer service, just quicker overall results. Thank you. Okay, Mike, did you have another question? I see your hand still up. No, I just left that up, sorry about that. Okay, um, and Christina, I'm gonna have you um, get with Angela to make sure that she gets any of the um, follow-up questions that you had or any um, of the outstanding data that you've asked for to you. Um, anybody else have a question before we sign out? Not seeing any other hands. I, I still have my hands up. I don't know if that oh, was. I, so, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Angela follow up with you, the communications officer for paid leave, and she can um, get any of your follow up questions answered um, and as well as get you the data that you've asked for. So um, as a reminder, this call was recorded. We will send out links to everybody who RSVP'd. We will also post it on the media page at www.oregon.gov slash employ under news and agency info. Thank you for participating today and for your partnership to keep or to keeping Oregonians informed. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Bye.